Hey everyone! So as we've been going through these videos, we've been going through parts of speech and traits of good writing, and it's time to finally start applying those skills and concepts to actual writing. Right now I wanted to focus on persuasive writing, and a big component of that is something called rhetoric. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that word. They definitely recognize rhetorical situations, and they've heard that terminology before. But what I want to do today is kind of take us through what rhetoric is and why it's such a huge component in persuasive writing. The main thing about rhetoric, people wonder, is it persuasion or is it manipulation? Rhetoric is the art of effectively or successfully persuading someone through speaking or writing. The three appeals of rhetoric are ethos, pathos, and logos. If you combine these three things, these concepts, and apply them when you're giving an argument, you're going to win someone over 95% of the time. The 5% that wouldn't make it 100 are factors that you have no control over. Regardless, a 95% success rate is astronomical. It's amazing how you can convince anybody to do something that you want based on these three things. I'm gonna go ahead and break those down into what ethos, pathos, and logos are. Ethos is your credibility. Are you a trustworthy individual? If you do not trust somebody, you're probably not going to listen to them. And this is why it's so important that when you build relationships, you need a foundation of trust. This goes for family, this goes for friends, this goes for significant others. You need trust to build, okay? That's how you can persuade someone to do something for you. There's established trust in a relationship, and that's a huge component and a third of rhetoric. Pathos refers to someone's emotions, and this is where the manipulation comes into play. If someone's good at feeding off of emotions of others or making someone feel a certain way, you can convince someone to do something for you, whether you're making them feel bad or feeling guilty, that's manipulation. But if you set the tone and you can make them feel a certain way, or if you know how they feel about something specifically, you're more likely to win them over. As an example, everyone, loves, I, everyone knows I love manatees. It wouldn't be that hard to try to convince me with my pathos. It'd be very easy to appeal to me with pathos to get me to say, yes, I want to go, because you know I'm already on board with that. You know I like manatees. They make me feel happy when I look at schnapps. Like it, it's going to work. It's going to be a successful um, rhetorical piece from you speaking to me about manatees. It's going to be positive. Logos is the logic in a situation. If something is logical, then people are going to be more likely to go for it. Um, I think there was some kind of appeal to the government to actually make a, uh, a Death Star. And although everyone was like, with pathos, everyone was all for it because um, it sounded cool and everyone was like, most people like Star Wars and it was just a really neat concept. Um, the credibility was that you needed 10,000 signatures or something along those lines to have the government recognize it. Um, it might have been more than that, I have to do my research. Um, so the ethos was there, it was credible so much that the government had to like give a response, but the logic of it was not there. It wouldn't be logical to make that and put that in our system that we have with the earth and moon. It just wouldn't make sense and it would cost so much money. It, it just wasn't practical. So that's just one example of logos. Logos is logic. There is a secret fourth appeal. A lot of people don't talk about it um, because they think that it's just this trifecta, this triforce of uh, appeals. Um, some people don't claim that it is. Uh, I claim that it is. It, it's, it's up to you whether or not, regardless, it's a really important piece in an argument that people just tend to forget. And this is called kairos. In ancient Greek, or in Greek language, there were two words for time, one being chronos and one being kairos. Chronos might sound more familiar because it goes along with the word chronological or 
in a sequence of or in order of something taking place. That's what that word means. Kairos, on the other hand, means a specific moment in time or the opportune moment, the supreme moment to, I don't want to say strike because I feel like that sounds very violent, but it's the opportune moment to make a decision or an opportune moment to discuss something with somebody. If someone comes home after a long day and they're upset and they they're not in the mood to talk, that's not a good time to appeal to somebody. That's bad kairos. That would make your, your appeals, whether they were great, eat those pathos and logos, they wouldn't matter because that person's not ready for that argument. They're not ready to engage in a persuasive conversation of any kind. If you wait until that person is calm, if they're in the right setting, if they're in a good mood, that's the opportune moment. Kairos, use it in your persuasion. That's all I have for you guys. Make sure you write down notes throughout this video. I will be checking them and don't be afraid to learn. Bye guys.